Now we've talked about baking two different materials to the same texture plane before and that's a very typical thing. You can do up to eight materials per one object. Today we're going to talk about how you can bake many materials to the same texture plane that are in different objects. But to review a little bit, here's a lamp post that has two materials. One's called metal, one's called glass. Both of them, we go to metal, you'll see that it says lamp post short, which is the name of the texture that I ended up baking to. This is it already baked. And if you go to glass, it's going to say the same thing. The image texture here is not connected. We've talked about this before, but that was just a little bit of a review. Today we're going to be working on six different grave markers that I'm making for an installation. And those are going to end up being loaded as a link set so that I can show you how to do that. It's important for you to understand that those two things, while they can go together, don't need to go together. So you can upload a link set that could have five different textures that you upload separately to go on the link set. Or you could also have five different objects that you're putting onto a texture and you could upload that as a single object. So there's two things happening here. They don't necessarily have to go together, but they can go together. Got it? I have made six different grave tombstones and they have all been mapped and they all have textures applied. If we go into edit mode, you can see that each one is in a spot on this picture plane and I have made a new image and called it gravestones. Now the important thing is that all of these have the same image texture over here that says gravestones. Remember this is not connected to anything. This just lets Blender know what you want to bake to. So if we go back to object mode and we click on this one, tab into edit, here's this one. Now I'm going to select all of these and join them. Not the not the white plane under there, which I do quite often because you don't want to join the white plane to your thing. So make sure you don't do that. Anyway, and save before you do this part. So I'm going to join them together. I'm going to make sure they're all joined together, and they are. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode and hit A for all. And you can see that they're all over here. Now they don't have to be all in the same spot. So for example, this one here is in this section here. Okay, but you might have noted before we got here that one of these other ones has one part here and one part down here. And that works just fine. It's going to depend a little bit if you're going to do any post-processing in your graphics program. So I try to get my picture plane filled as much as I possibly can. So we have six gravestones on one texture rather than six different textures, one for each gravestone. This is going to help with the server going out to get the textures. And it's also going to help with our upload costs, which is always a nice thing. So I'm going to go ahead and bake now. You don't need to watch me do that. And then we will return. Now that we have our texture baked, and you might want to upload this on the beta grid and test your textures at this point. I didn't do that. I was brave and it worked out just fine. Over here we have all of our textures and they're baked, but we now have one object and we want to have six objects when we get them in world. So we need to divide these up back into their single nature. So there's a couple different ways that we can do this. If I tab out so that these are off, Notice I'm in edit mode and I have face select active and over here in this window I have this little keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync button clicked so that I can see all the little dots here for the, in the center of each face. Okay, that's what you need to have happen. Then I can hold down the B key 
and box select and that will select all of these. Then clicking back in this window, I can hit the P key and type selection. And that makes this one separate. Now, obviously, it's lost its center of origin, so you have to put that back. But you need to do that with each one of these. Another method would be to click on the five remaining gravestones so that that's active, right click, and then go into wireframe mode, that's the Z key, and go into edit, and then you can box select from here. Same method, P key. So that's another choice. Somewhere in the process, and you can decide where it works best for your workflow, you're going to need to make physics models for all of these. And I've already done that. You can see that I just used a cube for each one of these, resized for the size of the gravestone. Okay, and then I went and I'm right clicking now with the shift key down. I went to the letter M while I'm in object mode and I moved those to another layer. So now all the physics are on this layer and the gravestones themselves are on this layer. You can do that anytime in the process. The really important part of this, and I'm going to tell you this again down the line, is that each one of the grave markers needs to match with a grave physics thing. Right now, all of these grave markers are called grave 6.001. That's because I hooked them all together. Yours may end up with a slightly different name. Don't worry about that. But right now, they're all together. And so there's only one record over here on the right-hand side for the graves themselves. But the physics models are all separate. And you can see they say grave 1 underscore phys, grave 2 underscore phys. OK, that's the important part of this process. Once we have our textures baked over here in our window, and they are baked to the same texture that we made for each one of the gravestones. We need to go back and change the naming of each one of these after we've divided them so that they're each a single mesh. If we click on one here, we see that that says grave five. That's because I already renamed them. It's pretty boring to watch me rename things. In order to do that, I went to this layer here where I was keeping the physics model and I clicked on this one. This tells me it's grave five. I go back to the, my main layer, layer one, and that's grave five. And so I made the match. So each one of these graves has its own individual name. And it's very important that the physics model name for each one of the pieces looks like this. OK, so grave four, grave four underscore fizz. That's it. Now that everything's set up, we need to save all of our graves in a link set. So I've clicked on one here. I'm holding down the shift key and right clicking on all the rest of them. Then I'm going to object, apply location, object, apply rotation and scale object transform origin to geometry. I'm not 100% sure that I needed to do that again, but it doesn't hurt to do it. And so I just always do. Then save your file. Now we need to go to where our physics models are and we need to save those as a link set too. Remember to apply your location rotation and scale, and transform to geometry, and then save that. And I would advise calling that grave link set physics, or 
car physics or whatever so that you'll know which one is the physics model and which one is the model of your actual objects. Over on the beta grid, I uploaded the object link set and I used the physics link set in the physics panel. So you can see that they matched very well and you can see that each physics model surrounds its own particular gravesite. Now if something goes awry and it does not look like this or whatever you're whatever you're uploading it wouldn't necessarily be gravestones it's most likely that it has to do with a location rotation scale origin to geometry thing. So try redoing that and give it another shot. I am uploading these at a very high LOD because I want everyone to be able to see them from far, far away. This is a full sim installation. And so each of these ended up being two land impact, which is more than what you would suspect. But again, you can see it from a very long way away. And that was my point here.